Hey guys, it's Kai and welcome back to my channel. So this tutorial is going to be a really fun sewing tutorial on this big organza ruffle boa. This is what she looks like. I decided to make it into a big loop. When I tell you how much money I spent, not that this is like such an expensive project, let me tell you this story. First of all, I'd estimate that I used like 30 to 40-ish meters of organza. Basically, the first time I went to the store, I was kind of like experimenting. So I was like, let me see how much 10 meters gets me. And then when I realized I needed more, I went to the store and I'm like, okay, give me like another 10 or 20. So now I have like 20 meters of this. But if you look very closely, this is a little bit more shiny than this. And it's also more firm. It doesn't like bend as much it's not as smooth as this one to add to the embarrassment i went on instagram the next day you guys don't make the same mistake as me bring a swatch into the store so you don't end up getting two of the wrong shades of fabric so that's what i did the next day i went into the store brought that swatch of this exact shade of blue organza after driving to like hmm, six different fabric stores around my city finally found one that looked alike so i said give me the entire roll i think it was like 20 meters it's another wrong shade of blue. So now I have this wrong shade of blue, this wrong shade of blue. So that's partially the reason why I didn't really make this as long as I wanted to. I was just like, I decided to cut my losses and just turn this into a loop. But it's actually kind of cute. Like you can just like throw it on almost like a backpack and then it's like, you don't have to worry about it being uneven on both sides. It just adds this flair of drama and fabulousness to any outfit. And I've been looking for tutorials about something like this for so long. I kind of just had to figure out how to make this like through trial and error so probably not the only way to do this but this is at least my approach um anyway i'm gonna go cry over all of this blue organza that i now have in my house and we're just gonna get into the tutorial i estimated using about 40 yards or 36 meters of organza it's like three bucks a yard so roughly 120 bucks plus maybe six dollars for a spoolie of blue thread and like three meters of ribbon and the ribbon will be threaded through the organza and represent the real length of the final product when all of the organza is bunched up so the organza is going to come in a width of about 150 centimeters, or at least that's what I was finding everywhere. Um, and you want to split that into four strips. So cut a notch in the middle and two more at these halfway points. And make sure your cuts are parallel to the long edge of the fabric so that you can tear along the grain of the fabric and save yourself the carpal tunnel of cutting through 40 yards thrice. You don't have to get 40 continuous yards, by the way, and I doubt that you would be able to find that much anyway. You can get four cuts of 10 or do as little at a time as you like to make this more manageable and attach them together end to end later because no one can really tell where you connect them anyway. So now you have four long strips. The next step is to fold this in half and sew lengthwise so you get a really long skinny tube. And I sew on a long straight stitch and I do this four times on the four strips and when you're done you have to attach them together end to end because we want one long strip. So in order to attach them, you have to feed one through the other and the outside tube should be inside out and the inside tube should be right side out. That way we're sewing them right sides together like in this illustration. So if your sewing machine has an attachment for like sleeves, um, that's where you would use this to sew this loop. Then when you pull this apart, you get one long tube that's inside out and you have to flip the entire thing right side out again. And you do that by reaching into one end, grabbing the other end and pulling it out. When I worked in increments of 10 yards, I didn't have much of a problem sticking my arm through one end and reaching the other end because the fabric could bunch up by that much. Um, but if not, you just have to take your time. I know it sounds confusing with all this inside out, right side out nonsense, but I mean, that's just the nature of the beast and there's nothing I can do about it. As you do this again to the other pair and then attach these pairs together, Eventually, it's going to be too long for you to handle and you can spend an entire like 10 minutes just flipping a single tube inside out. If you did this on a 10 yard cut, you can go out and buy some more yards of fabric, do the exact same process again to that, and then attach the tubes end to end just as I said. And this whole process took me about 200 years. I started during the War of 1812. Eventually, it'll be so long that you might find it difficult to be feeding one tube into another. So you can actually attach the tubes end to end with just a sort of Mickey Mouse top stitch, which just means you're sewing them together without feeding one into the other. So if it's not truly right sides together, it won't be as polished as possible. And you're just going to have to sew it from the outside. But that's inevitably what we're going to have to do in the end to close it off anyway. But at least you don't see any stitches when everything's bunched up together. 
To give you an idea of the length of this, I told you I was working with 40 yards worth of fabric, but I split each one up into four strips, making this 160 yards long when you attach the tubes end to end, which is 33% longer than the length of a football field. And that's about the closest you're gonna get to a football reference on this channel. Once you finally have one long tube that's right side out so that the seam is hidden inside, we can make this into the boa. So start off by estimating how long you want your finished boa to be. I bought three meters of blue ribbon and the motif is to bunch up the entire length of organza into this ribbon and then tie it off and sew it shut. A football field of fabric is way too long to fit on my arm. So I just used my light stand and tied one end of the ribbon to the bottom and taped it to the top. So I'll just gather my fabric on this. You could use like a broom or pole, anything else you have at home. So again, this took quite a while. And I'm being a little dramatic, but you could probably do this all in a day. But when I was done putting this all on that big pole, I took the extra ribbon from the top and tied it to the bottom so that I could unravel all of the organza from the pole and there would still be that knot to preserve all the gathering. And now you're in the home stretch. So we can't just sew this shut wherever we want and tie this circle as small or as large as we want because if you use too much ribbon and try to get more length out of this, if you haven't used enough organza, what happens is it kind of slides around with gravity and the fullness will be unevenly distributed so that all of the fullness will slide to the bottom, leaving the top of it looking flat, just like you see right here. So as much as we've compressed this tube down, what's unfortunate is we can't compress it to whatever length we want. We have to compress it only by as much as it wants to naturally so that when we close this off, there will be no sliding around and it will look uniformly full. So find out where that sweet spot is that allows you to get it as long as you can without it sliding around and tie the ribbon there and cut off the excess. Finally, we will close off the tube and you can use that little Mickey Mouse top stitch that I talked about earlier. It's always tough closing off a garment when you have no way to flip it inside out anymore, but just try your best and thankfully everything will be hidden in the ruffles in the end. This was one of the most fun projects I've ever done despite all of the wrong colors that I bought. Um, if I ever learn to trust myself again, I really want to make this in other colors. All right, you guys, so this is what the finished product looks like. It's super lightweight. You can store it and pack it without letting it get all mangled up like feathers would. And on that note, it is totally cruelty-free, which I'm very happy about. I hope you guys get the chance to try this out. I thought it was a really fun project. If you do give it a try, be sure to tag me on Instagram because I'd love to see. And oh my God, speaking of Instagram, I want to shout out Miss Callie Black, who gave me this earrings, which she made for me. She also made this ring too. She's a queen from Michigan and she makes jewelry. So I'll link her down in the description for you to go check her out. Anyway, thanks so much for watching you guys. Let me know down in the comments what were your thoughts and as well as any other requests you have on other projects you want to see me try out. But until my next video, I hope you guys are all doing well and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.